Let's start our top speed countdown with the 2020 Aston Martin DBS Superleggera. It's powered by a 715 horsepower twin turbo engine. It's 5.2 liter V12 makes the kind of glorious exhaust note one expects from England's premier supercar brand. After clearing 60 miles per hour in 3.2 seconds and the quarter mile in 11 seconds flat, this proper British sports car can hit a very improper 211 mile per hour top speed. British automaker McLaren engineered the Senna to be the most track-focused production car it has ever built. Minimal driver comfort and a lack of sound deadening keep the Senna's weight low and cabin noise high, while a sophisticated adaptive suspension delivers impressive cornering speeds and fast lap times. The Senna is a bit stylistically challenged, but McLaren's engineers point out the body sculpting is performance-oriented and fully functional. Thorough aerodynamic work and a 789 horsepower twin-turbo V8 let this supercar sprint to 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds, clear the quarter mile in 9.9 .9 seconds, and hit a top speed of 211 miles per hour. Not every 200 plus mile per hour supercar was produced in the 21st century. Let's hit the Wayback Machine and travel to the early 1990s when Jaguar unleashed the fastest production car the world had yet seen. Powered by a 542 horsepower turbocharged V6, the Jaguar XJ220 could hit 60 miles per hour in 3.6 seconds, run the quarter mile in 12.4 seconds, and attain a top speed of 212 miles per hour. These were astonishing numbers in 1992, giving the XJ220 the title of fastest production car, until another British automaker, an upcoming vehicle on our list, stole its thunder a few years later. The McLaren 720S pretty much redefined the supercar category when it debuted in 2017. Built on a carbon fiber passenger cell, the 720S uses an active suspension system to take full advantage of its svelte 3200 pound curb weight. The result is a comfortable road car that readily transitions to capable track car. But if simply going fast in a straight line is your goal, the 720S will oblige. Boasting 710 horsepower from its 4 liter twin turbocharged V8, this McLaren plows through 60 miles per hour in 2.5 seconds, crushes the quarter mile in 10.3 seconds, and hits a top speed of 212 miles per hour. The latest Ford GT pays homage to the original GT40 that won Le Mans in the 1960s. This new GT also won Le Mans in full race trim, using a combination of low weight, a twin turbo V6, and aggressive aerodynamics. The street version sends 660 horsepower to the rear wheels through a seven speed dual clutch transmission. This recipe gets the GT to 60 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds and through the quarter mile in 10.8 seconds, while nabbing a top speed of 216 miles per hour. Lamborghini has been producing powerful supercars for over 50 years, but the latest Aventador offers the brand's strongest performance in a striking package. The mid-engine, naturally aspirated V12 provides 759 horsepower, while weight-saving efforts bring the newest Aventador SVJ down to a relatively lithe 3,400 pounds. Setting a new lap record at the Nürburgring confirms the car's dynamic performance, while a 0-60 to 60 time of 2.5 seconds, a quarter mile time of 10.3 seconds, and a top speed of 217 miles per hour confirms it scoots in a straight line, too. McLaren incorporated electricity when creating its first modern super sports car. Dubbed the P1, this exotic plug-in hybrid merged a twin-turbo V8 with an electric motor to send 903 horsepower to the rear wheels. The P1's somewhat porky curb weight, at 3,400 pounds, was due to the car's dual drivetrains. But this extra weight was easily countered by the instant torque from the electric motor, sending the P1 to 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds, through the quarter mile in 9.8 seconds, and on to a top speed of 217 miles per hour. Another member of the hybrid-powered supercar club, Porsche's 918 Spider combines a 4.6 liter V8 with dual electric motors to develop a total of 875 horsepower. That much power going to all four wheels can launch the 918 Spider from a standstill to 60 miles per hour in just 2.1 neck straining seconds. It also clicks the quarter mile lights in 9.8 seconds and hits a top speed of 218 miles per hour. Named for the company's founder, the Ferrari Enzo was among the first supercars to feature advanced design elements like a carbon fiber body, active aerodynamics, and carbon ceramic brakes. These were cutting-edge supercar features when the Enzo debuted in 2003, making it one of the most advanced production cars of the era. The V12 engine produced 651 horsepower, 
and with a curb weight just over 3,200 pounds, the Enzo could accelerate to 60 miles per hour in 3.1 seconds, clear the quarter mile in 11 seconds, and hit a top speed of 218 miles per hour. Ten years after the Enzo, Ferrari introduced its next flagship performance car in the form of the La Ferrari. Ferrari's traditional V12 engine was joined by an electric motor to send 950 horsepower to the rear wheels. Once again, the instant torque of the electric motor provided this supercar with super acceleration, getting it to 60 miles per hour in 2.4 seconds and through the quarter mile in 9.7 seconds. LaFerrari top speed numbers are hard to pin down, with the automaker claiming 217 miles per hour and social media posts showing one hit 231 miles per hour. We're confident it's a 220 plus mile per hour machine. For Aston Martin's second appearance on World's Fastest Cars, the British automaker went old school. No turbos, no superchargers, no electric motors. Just a large displacement 7.3 liter V12 hauling around a carbon fiber chassis wrapped in sculpted aluminum. The 177's name comes from its production run, as only 77 of these 750 horsepower supercars were produced. But every one of them could hit 60 miles per hour in 3.4 seconds and top out at 220 miles per hour. The Huayra is a mid-engine supercar hand-built by Italian automaker Pagani. Thanks to a 750 horsepower twin turbocharged V12 sourced from Mercedes AMG and a curb weight of less than 3,000 pounds, it delivers explosive performance. While the single clutch automated gearbox can be brutally harsh, the neck snapping acceleration that accompanies it is addictive. Mash the artfully crafted alloy throttle pedal and it will hit 60 miles per hour in 2.2 seconds. Keep it mashed, and the Wyra will hit 230 miles per hour. Many automotive enthusiasts feel the McLaren F1 represents the pinnacle of production supercars. Engineered to exacting specifications, the mid-engine F1 was conceived to be the ultimate road car. Fitted with a naturally aspirated 12-cylinder engine from BMW, rated at 618 horsepower, the three-seater, with driver in the middle, boasts a traditional manual gearbox and rear-wheel drive. Kevlar, titanium, magnesium, even gold are some of the exotic building materials used to keep the F1's curb weight down to about 2,500 pounds. The 0-60 to 60 sprint takes just over 3 seconds, with a top speed of 241 miles per hour. Impressive figures in 2020, these were unprecedented performance numbers in the mid-1990s. The first of many Koenigseggs still to come on our list, we're grouping all the Koenigsegg CCs into a single entry. Starting with the CC prototype and ending with the CCXR, this vehicle series put Christian von Koenigsegg on the map when it comes to top speed claims, with various versions hitting between 240 and 250 miles per hour. Multiple engines were used over the course of the CC's run, but every model featured carbon fiber construction, tahedral synchro helix doors, and enough velocity to battle for fastest top speed production car at the time. As the official successor to the McLaren F1, McLaren's Speedtail lives up to that historic model's heritage with three critical features. First, it's got the F1's trademark central driver's seat. Second, it's got serious horsepower, 1,036 to be exact, courtesy of its twin turbocharged V8 working in conjunction with an electric motor. Finally, and most appropriately, it lives up to the speed portion of its name, with a top speed of 250 miles per hour. The Bugatti Veyron made headlines when it shattered top speed records in 2005. Equipped with a massive 8-liter W16 engine with four turbochargers, it boasts an awe-inspiring 1,001 horsepower. That's an incredible force, which requires a robust 7-speed dual-clutch automatic and permanent all-wheel drive to harness. An excess of luxury features, plus high-tech safety and aerodynamic systems, explain the Veyron's massive size. But the 4,200-pound supercar is still blistering fast, hitting 60 miles per hour in 2.5 seconds and a top speed of 253 miles per hour. After 10 years and multiple engine configurations, the SSC Ultimate Aero TT was fitted with a twin turbocharged Corvette V8 capable of nearly 1,200 horsepower. This version established a Guinness World Record in 2007 when it averaged 256 miles per hour on a closed course in Washington State. Bugatti followed its top speed record shattering Veyron with the Bugatti Chiron in 2016. The updated W16 engine now made an incredible 1,479 horsepower while top speed debuted at 261 miles per hour. Sure, that's fast, but a special previous version of the Veyron was still faster when the Chiron debuted. Bugatti's Veyron Supersport was produced in a limited run of just 30 units. The Supersport has 184 more horsepower and improved aerodynamics compared to the standard Veyron, 
allowing it to hit 267 miles per hour. That was enough to earn the Veyron Supersport a Guinness World Record as the fastest production car in 2010. The American-made Hennessy Venom GT is a low-volume supercar based on a Lotus Exige chassis. Comprehensively engineered to keep the 2,700-pound Venom as light as possible, the carbon fiber bodied platform boasts an active aero system for high-speed stability. Fitted with a twin-turbocharged V8 engine, the rear-wheel drive Venom develops up to 1,244 horsepower. That's enough to get the Venom GT up to 270 miles per hour. Following up on his CC series, Koenigsegg debuted an all-new model in 2011, dubbed the Agera. A 5-liter modular Ford V8 engine, making 947 horsepower, developed a top speed of 249 miles per hour. But while the Agera topped out at only 249, the later Agera R, with improved power and aerodynamics, ran a certified top speed of 273 miles per hour, making it the world's fastest production car in 2011. Following the more is better mantra, Koenigsegg added more power and air cheating wizardry to the Agera RS in 2015, now sporting a 1,341 horsepower V8 engine and benefiting from reduced weight, the Agera RS achieved an average two-way speed of 278 miles per hour in the Nevada desert. Bugatti has figured out the formula for ultimate top speed. Add horsepower, reduce mass, and tweak aerodynamics. The Chiron Supersport 300 Plus features an 8-liter quad-turbo W16 engine boosted to 1,577 horsepower. Magnesium wheels and titanium exhaust help shed unnecessary mass. Combine the power increase and weight loss with revised aerodynamics, and the Supersport 300 Plus is able to break through the hollowed 300 mile per hour barrier, hitting a certified 304.7 miles per hour. Breaking the 300 mile per hour mark wasn't enough for the folks at SSC, who began engineering their top speed entry back in 2009. The Tuatara, named after a New Zealand lizard, features a sleek carbon fiber body. It's powered by a 5.9 liter flat plane crank V8 making 1,750 horsepower when run on E85 ethanol. Using a closed highway near Pahrump, Nevada, the SSC Tuatara managed a one-way run of 330 miles per hour, despite tricky crosswinds. Combined with a previous run of 301 miles per hour, the Tuatara's two-way average is 316 miles per hour, making it the fastest street-legal production car in the world, at least for now. With a production car now topping 300 miles per hour, we can pretty much declare the top speed race over, right? Thankfully, no. Koenigsegg is close to unleashing his next high-speed missile. This one is called the Jesco, an all-new model with more power, more advanced aerodynamics, and more speed. The number that's already being touted, 330 miles per hour.